لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك Here's Assalamu alaikum you're watching this special program on Hajj I'm your host for today Fahim Bangish Hajj is something that's common in almost all the religions of the world Whereas uh, the Islamic Hajj has something distinct to it. It's, it has something more to it as far as uh, the pilgrimage uh, of people is concerned from all over the world, from the east of the world, from the west of the world. They all gather at one point, the Kaaba. They all gather in one city, that is Mecca. And then there are rituals. We will be talking about that today with our esteemed guests who are here in the studios. We will be talking about the ethical and social impacts the ethical and social aspects of Hajj. We will be talking about the basic philosophy of Hajj as to what is the significance of Hajj, why, ha why the pilgrimage has to be there as far as Islam is concerned, as far as other religions are concerned. Now to talk about this, we have uh, today in the studios uh, Professor Shokat Hayat, who is a scholar. Uh, we will be, uh, thank you very much for joining us, sir. And we will be talking about the philosophy of Hajj with you. Definitely. Then we have uh, uh, Abdul Jalil Sahab. He's a social policy analyst. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Then we have Dr. Aslam uh, Khaki with us. He's an Islamic scholar. So welcome to the program. Thank you. For now, uh, first of all, while talking about the philosophy of Hajj, sir, uh, we do see that in every religion, be it Judaism, be it uh, the Sikh religion, be it Islam, uh, be it uh, Christianity, we do see a pilgrimage. Now, first of all, what is the significance of a pilgrimage in every religion? Uh, before uh, I talk about uh, the philosophy or significance of pil pilgrimage, especially the pil pilgrimage of Mecca, Hajj, mm -hmm. I would like to clarify uh, a very important point right. in Islamic uh, uh, faith. Uh, that uh, since we are talking about commandments of Allah, Hajj is one of the commandments of Allah. Right. So apparently all the commandments which are addressed to the believers, they are apparently commandments. Right. But in reality they are blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like mm. if uh, Allah forbids me from committing zina, mm. or Allah commands me to pray five times. Mm. So apparently this is a command. But right. this is a blessing and uh, all the medical scientists of the world, they now agree that drinking wine or committing zina or other uh, acts which have been forbidden in Islam, they are injurious for the human body and the uh, human soul as well. Right. So Hajj is a command. But it's a blessing of Allah. How it is a blessing of Allah? We will talk about that when we will be talking about the philosophy and benefits. Right. So there, there are so many significances of uh, the, this pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. So at the top is to train. This is a training in my personal opinion. And in the result of my humble study, you see this Hajj is, uh, uh, is a training program for the believers. And they are trained to obey Allah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when, when a Muslim goes, uh, you see, from the four Muslim goes from the four corners of the world to perform the pilgrim of uh, Hajj, you see, they sacrifice so many things, comfort over their homes, exactly. they spend money, and they, do, they come across so many hardships during the Hajj, as you know. You see, so this is a sort of training. So the basic object and the basic uh, uh, philosophy behind the concept of Hajj is to train the believers. <coughs> sorry, you see, to to obey Allah, how to obey Allah, and how to make oneself ready and willing 
to so it's basically about self-development yes be it islam yes. or the other religions as well yes. or the religions before islam so for I, that i'm matter. sorry i don't yeah. know what is the philosophy behind uh, uh, the pilgrimages of other religions but i'm sure that this is a In training Islam, it's self development yes. basically yes. and to cleanse one's own self yes. to cleanse one's own yes. soul and to to make him ready to sacrifice every desire every comfort for the pleasure of allah absolutely yes absolutely now uh, <coughs> we come towards you um, uh, the delegate itself you're a social policy analyst now hajj also has uh, uh, a social dimension to it. It also has an ethical dimension to it. Uh, it talks about the ihram, being in ihram for so many days. And that, that shows representatives of the Muslim community from all over the world. And they are in one sort of, may I call it a uniform, which shows uniformity among the whole Muslim ummah, which shows uh, unity, which shows solidarity. How would you comment on that? <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That's a very good question, and that is one of the purpose of the Hajj. Why we perform it, you know, with the with same tradition, with same rituals, and with the same appearance as well. But Hajj should be taken as it should be taken as an exercise which has been specifically hmm. may Almighty God have made it as part of our you know the worship system in order to revive those traditions, those role models those mo role model which <coughs> which, uh, which have uh, played very important role in the transformation of the human civilization and the basic uh, the, uh, starting from Hazrat Ibrahim who set up this uh, you know the house of God here number one right and then the sacrifice which was <coughs> the sacrifice made by Hazrat Ismail by offering his own neck you know by offering his own life to his own father in the name of Allah and which was accepted and Almighty God have eternalized that, you know, eternalized that ritual. He said that in the succeeding generation will celebrate these events in order to, in order to feel, you know, in order to feel that, uh, that the spirit of the sacrifice through which Avratis might have gone. And likewise, every person Every Muslim who is a believer in Islam and the Islamic value system hmm. should be ready to make these sacrifices. Number Absolutely. Two. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, <coughs> you know the lost Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who issued a lost sermon <coughs> and he specifically said to the Muslim that the Hajj, I mean, about, he, he specifically said to the Muslim that you have to maintain unity among themselves. So the Hajj is a forum which brings, uh, which brings about unity by, get, by, by bringing all the Muslims of the world together in a one place, it, irrespective of the fact who they are, which language they speak, to which color they belong to or which ethnic group they belong to. They all, you know, before, when they reach here, they become the man of the God, the member of the faithful community of the Muslim and That's submit right. themselves before Allah. This helps them in the transformation of the concept of a Ummah, in the transformation of the, of what you say, a collective universal body of the Muslim, uh, of, the, uh, of the Muslim community. This is a very, I mean, this is kind of an experience, I would say, which is unique in itself. Because this is, uh, there is no other community in the world which uh, <coughs> provides you, you know, which provides you such kind of an experience for bringing spiritual and social unity among themselves. So this is another. And then when we interact with each other, there are communities which are coming from Asia, Africa, Europe and America and etc. And every person brings his own, you know, <coughs> the way of life, thinking and etc. etc. This is, and when you gather in one place and when you interact with each other, you try to learn a lot from each other's experiences. Absolutely. So it so has this a cultural is a great dimension to it as well. experience of learning as well as liberate, spiritually liberating experience. <coughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Now, uh, Dr. Aslam Khaki Saab, I'd like to ask you, uh, <coughs> a man's ego, it's one of the things which causes a lot of conflicts, as we know. Uh, we see it in daily life. We see it in relationships. Now, uh, there's another point in Hajj which says that this is the purpose is to purify one's ego. Could you shed some light on that? Yeah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hajj is a special training for the changing the mindset and the behavior of the people, as other trainings and religious uh, rituals are there. So the one is that 
we are just clutched with many biases, many e uh, forms of ego. Hat right. is there to wash it away. Particularly the equality of mankind. Yeah, that is there. That's why we take the ihram and we take the white color. White color means it reflects, as in physics we see, yes. that the white color reflects all the colors. Yes. As opposed to the black which absorbs all the colors. So it reflects all the colors. So in Hajj we reflect all the section of the society with us that we all are equal. So the ego which was there, suppose I am a landlord, I go, but when I, in the daily life, I don't uh, sit or dine with my uh, farmer or with my servant, with my the serv, but when I go in the Hajj, I am supposed to be equal with him in all those uh, dimensions, seating, in the dress and all that. So this is just to pull down your ego or you can say the negative aspect of ego I would like because there is positive aspect of ego as well. So it washes there and particularly if you see Quran says in the Safa wal Marwata min Sha'airillah that these Safa and uh, marwa that the run between the two mm -hmm. are the beacon houses. These are the light houses for the mankind. How it is? Because we see the background of that Safa and Marwa is that the Abraham, Holy Abraham had two wives. One wife was there and she, Sarah, and Sarah. the other was Haji ha. or Hajra. Sarah stood with her. Uh, you can say family background and she was proud and was egoistic. On the other hand, she, the uh, Hajra, Hajir, she was a she slave. She was black. She in ethnicity or color wise and gender was that she was a woman. Hmm. So all these colors and all these were overcome and crossed by that that she submitted to the will of Allah Almighty when she was left there with her newborn child, that is Hazrat Ismail. She surrendered before the will of God and submitted to it. And then she was running before Safa and Marwa, that is to not in search of water for herself, but for her child. Absolutely. So that yes. is also a message to the mothers that you should forego your or you should uh, strive and make efforts for the rearing of your child and you should submit to the will of God. That's why Quran has made it that these are one of the sha'ir. So who no Quran says who will whoever will go for Hajj or for Umrah, he has to run between the two hills in the uh, just to follow the Hajir, Sunnah of Hajir, as I say that Sunnah Imra. It is the sunnah of a woman and that was like due to her good conduct surrendering before the will and wish of Allah Almighty. Right. So even the prophets, prophets also just followed the sunnah of including the, our holy prophet وسلم, including the sahaba and even now up till now we see that the kings, rajas, landlords, they may be Raja here, but they go there, they submit and follow the Sunnah of a woman. True. Proving that gender equality, that it's not patriarchal society, that if I do the good, I, or I can lead, I should be followed. No. Even if a woman does some good act, that should be followed and that should be made a beacon house. Even racial ethnicity was crossed, that she did not belong to a free uh, tribe, she was a slave girl. So even a slave girl or a person who is socio-economically low in our society is equal before God. That's true. That's so true. that is all types of these border were crossed through this exercise. So that, But when we run before uh, there, we don't have this mindset. We just... Uh, we do it the for number the sake of doing it. Yeah, we are yes. is it in, uh, doing all these rituals technically without any spirit in that. That's why we come from Hajj and our conduct is the same. Rather so we do it because we have worse. to do it. That's uh, yeah, it. because no, we, not, not we because just take technically right. and not spiritually, not the spirit. That What was the spirit there? We don't even recall the Hajir in our mind. We don't, re when we return to our society, we must respect our women. Oh yes, we, I have followed the sunnah of women because she was right. 
So if a woman is right, we should follow it. If our even servant is right, maid is right, we should follow it or we should uh, accept his or her opinion. We should respect her as we have respected. In now, see, you've right. raised a very interesting and important point here because uh, even I did not think about uh, think on these lines like you just mentioned. It, it's a sunnah of a woman. Yeah. Uh, it could be a maid. Athlete, it could be yeah. a slave. And they could be right as well. And what yeah. they have done can be made into a sunnah. Yeah. That's, that's very true that's and interesting. It. Even the hajj would not be accepted. That's Without it. The prophets, after that, they followed that sunnah. So all ethnicity and color, even as uh, then the Holy Prophet وسلم, said on the same way in Hajjatul Vida, لا فضل على عربي على العجمي ولا ولا أحمر على الأسود ولا أسود على الحمر أحمر and reciprocity is there. So in that that there is no superiority of the Arab over the non-Arab, of the non-Arab exactly. over the Arab, of the black over. So she was black, Sarah was white, Sarah was of socio-economically of you know, even well-structured, grand, gorgeous lady. And she was small structure. Eh? The she's, uh, the slaves are there. They are small structure, underdeveloped uh, in all the respects. But she had a link with right. Allah Almighty and wish and will. So that was made of more. That also tells us that at the end of the day, what matters is that how strong is your bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, I'm moving towards you. Um, Professor Shokat Hayatsab, uh, we do see there are a lot of rituals involved when we talk about Hajj, be it uh, the Rami, the j of the Jamarat, be it uh, the Zabiha, be it the circumambulation, kissing of Hajj Aswad, and like Dr. Khaki was mentioning, the Sai. Uh, how do you, uh, how could you like enlighten us with the the spirit of all these rituals? Because we do see people circumambulating, we do see people kissing the hajr -e aswad Why is that everyone has to go and kiss hajr -e aswad Why is it that we see there are there's such a huge crowd where hajr -e aswad is? And uh, as far as the uh, door of the Kaaba is concerned, as far as stand, uh, uh, spending the night out in Muzdalifa is concerned, could you shed some light on that? Actually, behind all these rituals, there is one spirit and one philosophy, and that, that is obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Just take the example of kissing Hajra Aswad. Hmm. Umar radiallahu ta'ala uh, is reported to have once said that, Oh, you black stone, hmm. I would have never kissed you unless the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has ordered me. So all these rituals, in uh, behind some rituals, you may not see any logic. Right. You see, but we are, or, or the pilgrims are, are uh, performing them, and that is part of the Hajj, because just to show that this is obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So this is the spirit behind all these rituals. I mean, it's not necessary to know the logic behind it. Otherwise, there are so many commandments so many uh, acts of worship there is no 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 logic apparently like you are very tired at mm. the time of isha at the end of the day and you need to pray say more than 10 rakats yes early in the morning you are fresh you have slept for five hours and you are reading two rakats you That's see true. all that we do without questioning questioning its uh, its uh, logic you see just in obedience of and as I in the in the beginning of the talk I told you that this hmm. is a training program this is a training program for the Muslims to submit their self to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa for training for in the for the true spirit of Islam yes. as Islam also yes. means yes. submission I mean submission yes Islam is nothing but submission to the to Allah Almighty so absolutely. this is a, yes. absolutely now, um, uh, moving forward uh, towards you, Abdul Jalil Saab, uh, talking about, like you were mentioning previously as well, the political dimension of Hajj, you said, and especially before this time, now when we have mobile phones, now when we have the digital world, before this, uh, when Muslims were quite oppressed uh, before the Ottoman Empire, etc., when the Muslims used to congregate in that one point and talk about their areas with one another, 
How do you think that works in today's world? Does that happen in today's Hajj too? Do people interact with each other and share uh, one another's experiences with one another? Yes, um, that's a good question. I mean, say that so far as the, the objective of the Hajj are concerned, when we analyze them, we will see that there are various uh, there are various symbols that we pursue during the Hajj ceremony. For example, you were just talking about the kissing of the Hajjari as well. Hmm. For example, as the, f uh, as the story goes that this is a basically, this is a divine flash, Arat Jalli, which has actually, when it appeared within the dimension of the time and the space, it became into a stone. So it is something which has got to do with create your relationship with the Jaldiyat Elaya. When you are kissing it or you are trying to sanctify it, you know, that is what Allah wants you to say. He says that he, he issues an order in the heaven and when it comes within the space, uh, dimension of the space and time, it becomes a kind, uh, it assumes an existence of materialism as we all have adapted. But basically we are all divine phenomena, almighty Allah, right? So this is, uh, this is meant for the upliftment of uh, your spirit as well. And this is, you can say, this is a liberating, it has a spiritually liberating influence that you feel at time you have become part of the eternity. And that is what Almighty God, Almighty Allah wants you to feel it. That you should rise above the fetters of the materialism in order to feel the, uh, the eternal timeless existence of Almighty Allah. This is the one. Similarly, we, uh, we observe another ritual of Rami you were just talking about. The Rami. Rami stands for the devil. I mean, the, and that's the place where the devil appeared, you know, in order to deceive, in order to put suspicions in the mind of uh, Ibrahim Islam, or although he was a prophet, he is beyond any weaknesses. But the devil has to make it his effort as part of its uh, nature. And he, it was defeated, right? And that moment has been eternalized through this ritual. Almighty God said that everybody should feel and should feel its subconsciously as part of his subconscious belief, the devil is your enemy, try to overcome the suspicions, the, what we say, the vasvasa, try to overcome the, 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 the suspicion of the devil which it would cause time and again in you and divert you from it. And it's a big challenge to you, try to overwhelm it and to prove your leadership quality over it. And that is how you have to, that is how you have to act, you know, with the determination against all evils. So this is another ritual which we perform in order to in order to develop our leadership trait. You know, Almighty God wants each Muslim, each one of us, to exercise the role of a leader in this world, who fights against, who battles against the the, the onslaught of uh, the evils in the society. Right. Also, Number they talk, when they talk about jihad, they say jihad against yes. one's own uh, self. Yes, this is yes, this is a jihad against your own self because when you are moving out of a Kaaba to perform the ritual in Muzalfa, that's a very tough exercise through which you have to pass. It's more or less like a military exercise. The military, as if the military is going into a foreign land where there is a complete, uh, uh, you know, insecurity of the circumstances. You don't have a ready-made house, you don't have the roads, you don't have the food available. So that's the kind of an experience Almighty God wants you to go through it. You know, and it brings about, it shakes the human consciousness to a larger extent. You start, you know, whatever your, whatever your dogmatic, your dogmatic beliefs are there, your association are there, they are broken apart. And you start out of it, you come up with a person who lives for, who, 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 who have started living like a transcendental reality. This is what Almighty God wants us to live with it, you know, <coughs> as, uh, as Iqbal said. And this is when you start living like a transcendental reality, you feel really as part of the living attribute of the Almighty Allah. Kahari ho, gufari ho, kudusi ho, jabirut. Ye chara nasar ho, to banta hai musulman. These are the, I mean, you must feel God the, the, in, in, in the heart of your, in, in the heart of your heart. I mean, that is very important. And the, 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 the tough time that you get there will definitely, it will shake you and it will dismantle your strong ego or a raw ego, right? Firstly. And secondly, you develop, this is a social environment in which, the, as I was just talking, in, in which you feel 
uh, you know, <coughs> in which you find that the people from all over the world have come, speaking different languages, behaving in a different way, with different colors. And then you are placed in this environment in which you do not have a, a previous background of relationship. But here, it's a challenging environment. You have to cultivate friendly relationship in order to, you know, in order to, <coughs> in order to perform many functions together, right? So, this is a new type of environment, which is, I would say, which carries a lot of universality in it. Universality. And so, you rise above your petty nationalistic territorial affiliation in order to become a, as Iqbal have said, Amsaya Jibraili Amin Yabandai Khaki. You rise above your earthly level and start feeling like a man of a God who is ready to, you know, play a role for the will of God in this world. So, it has a spiritual dimension. <coughs> wonderful, uh, wonderful. Now, uh, moving uh, towards you, Dr. Khaki. Uh, the Quran mentions uh, something about sacred months as far as uh, Zil Hajj is concerned, Ziqad is concerned. It talks about sacred months. Could you uh, kindly shed some light on that as well? Because uh, uh, when we talk about Hajj, all we think about is Zil Hajj. Whereas uh, we do know that there is a mention about sacred months, more than one. So, uh, could you let us know about that too? Yeah, Ashura Haram, that they were, those are just termed as that. These are four months practically. Those involve all those days and the time when the people just travel from four flung areas, particularly in that time when they have to take it on the camels and horses. And it was also persuaded that they should also carry with them the trade, so that it should be a trade center as well. That is the barqa of Hajj for those people. As Quran says, La ilaha fi Qurayshin ilaha fi mirihlat shita I was safe. That was that. That O oh, Quraysh should realize the blessings of Allah that due to this Kaaba, <laughs> they earn a livelihood and they get financially strong. So there are many uh, of those. So. Quran says that these are woman dakhalahu kana amina. So the one of the signs of Hajj is that the peace society, development of a peace, peaceful society. That gives us a message that when we get, uh, go back, if we just cross these barriers, why I have dispute with the other people? Why I have quarrels with that? Because I have my ego there. I Absolutely. discrimination. I say yes, he is my tenant. I'm the landlord. He is of low, you can say, socio-economically low cost. I am of the high cost. He is the, he, I am employer, he is employee. So all this stratification, that develops the dispute and the hatred among the various categories of the people. So these are just crores. So all that and respect, tolerance, when we perform Hajj, but it is very uh, shocking to just uh, tell that the people they go for the stampede they don't have the tolerance for the other people in these uh, in days we see especially in today's uh, era in India, they should show more tolerance than just no tolerance and just all that so Quran says Fihi ayat bajinat. so these are the signs there and number two is the unity as my learner friends were I just go ahead Hajj is not obligatory only for Muslim, it is for all the uh, holders of the book, right? Again, because it is the, all the uh, rituals performed belong to the family of Abraham. Yes. No ritual is there which is performed by any other person including all the prophets coming after Abraham. It is the only family of Abraham. I mean, and these are the main things. All other are just in the interpretation and enforcement of those values. Because they just give you the values of sacrifice and all that as my learner friends have just deposited. One of the main things, the Quran wants to develop a peaceful society. So in these months, four months, you are not supposed to just call. Even Quran says if somebody kills you or just attacks you, you should avoid that. However, if he, he kills you in the haram, then you can react to that. So it and is this killing, we're talking about just uh, 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 the uh, holy cities or are we talking yeah, about the, the whole world? The haram, even the city. So these are the months of uh, hurma. Hurma means sacred month. That's why Quran says, Fala rafasa wala fasuka wala jidala fil hajj. That there is no nuisance, no fight, no molestation in this area in, in these months. So all these are banned which create conflict or 
a rift in the people. So a peaceful society, there is a model of a peaceful society, how to live peacefully despite our difference in the color, complex, difference yes. in the ethnicity, difference in our status and all that. But the problem is there that we have now changed our values. The Hajj is to just make all the people equal. But now there are four star Hajj, five star Hajj. The people have one uh, in the camp, he is ha he's a poor person. He is having no facility except which are the normal. On the other hand, near to him is a person, five star Hajj, he has a fridge there, even in cooling effects and all that, he is staying there. So I think that this should not be allowed. And number two is that it is for all the people. Quran says, then it was said, It is obligatory for all the people. Allah has made it obligatory for all the people this Hajj, not only for Muslims. That's why Hajj was performed even before Islam came. And Quran says, Quran says that Allah asked the Holy Abraham after the construction of uh, Kaaba that you should ask the people, call the people that they should come. So not only the Muslims, I feel because I have been on interfaith dialogues to US and at many four I say, it is a platform of interfaith dialogue as well. And Quran says, Man sabila, the people who have istatat, not istatat only physically or financially, but only intellectually uh, uh, and also intellectually. True, and it's true. more important. That's why I hold the people may not accept it that you should not make it a, you can say, mess. No, very sorry, no Hajj has become a mess. But now Corona has just put us back to that. The limited <laughs> gathering, limited <laughs> intellectual I, gathering. I, I would have to interrupt you here. We have to take a short break. We will yeah. be right back, viewers. Stay tuned. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لا Welcome back everyone. Now continuing with our discussion, I would start off with you Professor Shokat Hayat Uh We've seen that rituals of Hajj have been going on since decades and centuries. There, there has to have been something which have kept this alive. There has to have been some philosophy, some objective by God, by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu by uh, Prophet Abraham, which has kept it alive through centuries, through decades. Could you shed some light on that philosophy and objective? Yes, the force which have kept them alive is very simple to call it Iman. Right. So whoever believes in La ilaha illallah and he has the ability as Professor Khaki referred hmm. to and he realizes that he is uh, obligated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perform Hajj and it will continue till the day of judgment. So it's uh, attached with the Iman. You see generally speaking there might be people that uh, knowing that Hajj is obligatory for them and I have heard about people who went to Jeddah and returned from there, you see, without performing the Hajj. That's another thing. But generally, this is Iman, which keep these rituals and, uh, you see, these uh, obligations alive till today. Because we do see that people do perform Hajj, and like Dr. Khaki was just mentioning, people come back without actually... Uh, delving into the philosophy of what Hajj is all about, what the <coughs> rituals are all about. We do see them returning and continuing with their uh, 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 pre-Hajj routines. Yes, you are very right to say that. I would, uh, I would ask you a question. You see a very beautiful car, new model. You see, and you try to start it, but its ignition is not working because there is no battery or battery is not working. So what's the use of this car? So the battery of a Muslim to follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to follow the sunnah of Prophet, that is Iman. iman. And what is Iman? What is Iman? La ilaha illallah is on the tip of the tongue. It has to be brought down to the core of heart. You see, and Sahaba, Sahaba in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they needed to broad this kalima and faith on this kalima down to their heart. And that could be only done by negating your own <coughs> self. Yes, yes, 
law. Yes, yes. That's why you see generally people go, they perform their Hajj and no change is observed observe in them. The change you see is the heart and that is called Iman. So we have to make efforts on developing Iman on, the, on uh, Allah Almighty and the Kalima. Only then we will be following his commandments. So the one who has got Iman, the required, uh, you see, quantity of Iman, whether he has performed Hajj or not, but he will be following the commandments. Just, uh, just uh, about a street vendor who can never think of going for Hajj, but when you look at him, he follows all the commandments. But a very rich person, he goes every year for Hajj, but his practical life is not you see, he is not uh, uh, following the commandments of Allah. So that so philosophy is has to show in your actions of daily yes. life. Yes. You're right, yes. you're right. Now, uh, moving forward, uh, Abdul Jalil Saab, mm -hmm. talking about qurbani, zabiha, sacrifice of the animal that we do every year. Uh, we do see that now, every year, it's a matter of perhaps a show-off. It's a matter of uh, seeing which animal has been bought at what price. Where is that philosophy? Where is that thought, that spirit of Qurbani and sacrifice wh which uh, was there in uh, Prophet Abraham and his son? Bangla sir, the <coughs> question is that when we sacrifice animal, we should try to connect it with the traditions, with the actual motive which was, which played its important part. Hmm. You know, <coughs> important part in the performance of the ritual, in the performance of the by Hazrat Ibrahim Islam. Right. In fact, he was asked by Almighty, I mean, in a, in a dream, what he saw that it was an order of Almighty Allah to sacrifice his own son. And Hazrat Ismail, he was reluctant initially to do it. But ultimately, Hazrat Ibrahim, I mean, it's very difficult to sacrifice one's own son. But ultimately, Hazrat Ibrahim, Islam, you know, <coughs> he talked to his son and he said, that such kind of a dream I have seen. And he said that if it is the order of the Allah, and he being a prophet will have received this instruction, which cannot be other than the truth, total truth. So he said that you should carry it out. And I am here to sacrifice my life there. And that was the style which was highly appreciated by Almighty Allah. And this was the behavior of his son which Almighty God wants that all, you know, the all, all children should, you know, all children should observe so far as the parental, you know, the parental tradition of the social obedience are concerned. Now, Almighty Allah, and then he performed it. He tried to perform it and he meant it. He used, uh, he, he used knife as well. But Almighty Allah, Rabbul Izzat, you know, there and then he accepted it. And he said that now you have passed in this test, right? And your son has also passed in this test. He has offered his, uh, his own life. S setting, it's, it carries a deep wisdom. This ritual carries a deep wisdom in itself. And what is that wisdom? We need to understand it. Almighty God wants that wherever, whenever it comes to the order of Almighty Allah, when it comes to the interest of the interest, the enlightened interest of Ummah, I would say. And even if you have to sacrifice your son, please go ahead. Sometime in an organization, if you are working, let me see, uh, uh, tell you that how we can practice it in our day-to-day -day living. In our life, we always, you know, we indulge in nepotism, favoritism, and normally we try to accommodate. This is, this is a big, you know, this, this is a big corrupted form of the behavior which is, uh, with which we are living in our own society. Hmm. Almighty God says that even if he is very close to you is your son, is your, he or she is your daughter, or is your whosoever is, or you are connected or related to him through language or through your blood kinship. Do not, you know, make it as a limitation if you are giving a decision or you are educating on the question of the right and the wrong. Go ahead. And even if, go ahead in the spirit, in the Ibrahim spirit of he, he knew that this is the order of the God. He said that I must carry it out 
because it is the will of the God, although it involves the life of my own son. So Almighty God says that even if you have to take an unpleasant decision and you know very well that it goes in the interest of the Umar, it goes in the interest of the ultimate truth, that ultimate truth which Almighty Allah has obligated us to follow, then we should go ahead and do it, right? And that is what you see in the battlefield of the Badr. There were many Sahabis who came in, you know, who, who were facing directly their own relative, their father and their brother, exactly. and they killed them. Yes. And Hazrat Abu Bakr Razi Allah Ta'ala now once said his son who, who later on accepted, his, uh, accepted Islam and he said that uh, I was always praying that you should not come before me because I have a son, it, it would have, you know, it, it would, as a son, it would have put me in a great difficulty, you know, standing before you with a sword in my hand. And he said that if you had come before me, you know, the, the, I would not have spared you. So this is the kind of the behavior, this is the kind of a Muslim behavior which Almighty God wants us to behave. Why it is so? Because Almighty God, th this is the concept of a Tawheed. And th is, Khana Kaaba is a, is a, this is basically Kaaba is a house of God. Hmm. And it replicates the it replicates the universality, eternity, and the and the purity of the Bait al-Mamur. Bait al-Mamur is a place where billions and billions of the angels they you know they <coughs> they carry out circumnavigation, uh, they carry out tawaf around it. You know it's a ritual in and that ritual you can say that is a ritual which in fact in the in the in the heavenly world. It cannot be easily understood, but that is a, <clears throat> but exactly, on, exactly in the, within the dimension of the time and the space, you know, we try to replicate those practices here on the earth. And we replicate it for, es for establishing the truth of the, uh, the, uh, la ilaha illallah. Hmm. Basically, the Hajj is meant Hajj is meant to introduce, to, to have the feeling of la ilaha illallah, that God, that is the, okay, what is, <coughs> that's the message of the Tawheed, that there is only one God who is all seeing, He is our creator, and that is a, that's the, that is, that is the, the anti-classical spirit of Quran and Islam. Right. That you should try to break yourself, break your association with your land, break your association with your with your linguistic group. Everything rise above your you know uh, your material sir, in order to feel one with God. And once you will feel it one with God, you will start feeling like the living you know living attributes of Almighty God. That is what is the that is the spiritual dimension of the. Of uh, that is the spiritual dimension of the heart, right. and once you come out of this, you are completely transformed persons, ready to interact with the material reality of the life with a new background. You know, like as soon Surah Yasin in Surah Yasin, Rabb Inna Jalna Fi Anakehim Agla Lan Fahiya Ilalas Kane Fahum Mukma Mukma Hayun. Allah Rabbul Izzat says in Surah Yasin. You know that, that uh, you cannot put those people on the right path if their necks are fettered. What are these fetters? Uh, how, uh, how, uh, what does this uh, stand for? The, we are our necks are fettered by our lives are imprisoned by tradition, rituals. Right. You no, know? absolutely, absolutely, you're right. Yeah. Now, uh, Dr. Kokur Sahib, uh, <coughs> Allama Iqbal also uh, mentions the sacrifice in one of his pieces of poetry when he mentions adab e farzandi oh. when he mentions uh, Ibrahim, exactly ismail ko adab e farzandi exactly <laughs> where are those values in today's time so the problem is that when we perform these rituals we don't just conceive the spirit we only focus the technical aspect or the physical aspect of that so it is the failure of our religious leadership as well as the people. When a person performs Hajj, when he is going, we have just given him a license that when you will go back, uh, come back, all your sins, these would be washed off. This is the wrong concept, totally based upon Vika Hadith. Only Hakukullah are washed, not Hakukul Ibad. If I have killed a person, even I uh, perform thousand of a Hajj, that would not be washed away. Only Hakukullah. So that is there that we don't come with that concept and with that spirit. 
And number two is the failure or the just wrong practice of the people. When they come back, we go, Mubarak, Mubarak, no. Observe his conduct for two months. If he was in CDAD or he was in uh, officer, and he continues accepting the bribe even after Hajj. A person who is just nuisance in the mala, he continues that. You should not congratulate him. Rather, you should tell him, oh, you have wasted your time. And the money on the Hajj, you have not changed yourself as Hajj requires you. So, the second is that Tawaf. There is Ayatum Bajinat, Quran says that there are in evidences there, and this is the training. Tawaf is a training that I would make my life. I will make Allah Almighty as the hub of my life. I would follow the teachings of Allah Almighty. That's where the wrongs. Even you can say in Hindu culture, in the marriages, they take the seven rounds. Yes. So these taking the round is psychologically and physically commitment. Make We make the commitments while doing these rounds. But we don't conceive it. When I'm going at the Hajj, I should, when I'm making round, I should have in my mind, Oh God Almighty, I would make your orders and commandments as the hub of my life and it should be actualized. This value should be inculcated in my conduct when I come back. So the religious leadership has failed, the public has just boosted in the wrong way. So all this should be corrupt, this should be told that you have to do. As far as Qurbani right. is concerned, I would like to make one addition. Uh -huh. In Qurbani, it is a multiple uh, exercise. It is a sharing and caring. Hmm. So Qurbani cannot be replaced by Sadqa. I have because in Qurbani there are three parts as we just make. It is just to boost up the e agro-based economy of the poor people. Right. Trillions of rupees are spent in just purchasing the animals. That animal which is usually sold in uh, ordinary time for 15,000, we just purchase it for 30 and 35,000. We should be happy. We are contributing to the agro-based society who just spend their life in very, you can say, hard and tough circumstances in the villages. They can't even educate themselves. So that is a bailout program, I say, that when so there is a bailout grant to the PI or to other institutions, it is a bailout <coughs> grant from Allah Almighty, and we share our money with the, these agro people without any uh, income support program or without any jawan program that is at the other side That's but another thing, automation yes. automatic that we are sharing and number two is we can't uh, give sadaka in, in that except if i have two right. or three animals <coughs> one i can money send to the sadaka but one must be there so right. that I just share it with the friends, with myself, and then with the poor. Right, 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 sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're running really short of time. Otherwise, it's a very interesting discussion going on. Um, Professor Shokat Hayat, sir, thank you very much for being with us, for giving us your time. Uh, Abdul Jalil, sir, thank you very much for, for your time and insight. And finally, Dr. Asim Kokar, sir, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, um, I hope and I wish that whatever intellectual discourse we have today, I hope we actually materialize this in our daily lives. When we go for Hajj this year, I'm not, um, I'm not so sure whether anybody would be going or not from Pakistan. Next year onwards, when things get better, when we start going for Hajj, I hope and I wish that people actually realize what the spirit of Hajj, what the philosophy of Hajj is all about. And the people who are not going for Hajj, people who are sacrificing their sacrificial animals this year in Pakistan, people abroad, all the Muslims are doing it. I hope they continue to uh, absorb, understand, and tell other people what the spirit and philosophy of sacrifice is all about. I hope we get those values under which the sacrifice was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that continued for gen generations to generations, from centuries to centuries. Well, I hope and I pray that all our qurbani and sacrifice gets accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you very much. Look after yourselves. Keep watching BTV World. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك 
لا شريك له